Hello, I'm Daniel Watrous, and in this short video I'm going to show you some of the other settings available in the general settings area of the Authorize.net for WordPress plugin. So you get to the general settings, you scroll down the menu on the left until you get to Authorize.net, and you click either on Authorize.net or General Settings. Both will take you to this page. In another video we've already been over the Authorize.net details. So scroll down a little bit and you'll see that there are checkout options. And I'm going to go over these real briefly. The Use SSL will generally be checked in a production environment. And what that means is that the URLs that are created for checkout include HTTPS. Now I want to stress that if you uncheck this, it should be for testing only. As soon as you uncheck this, what that means is anyone who submits credit card information to your website is submitting it in the clear. That means anyone in the world who sees that data being transmitted back to your website can pick it up and see their credit card number and other personal details. So this is for testing only. If you are actually processing transactions, you need to make sure that this is checked. Now one of the reasons SSL is required is because all of the processing happens on your website. That means you don't have to send someone off to another website in order to finish their transaction. Now, you also have a chance to specify a checkout page and a thank you page. And there are two things you need to do to set this up. First is you need to create each of these pages. The next thing is that you need to make sure that whatever your permalink setting is in WordPress, that the link you provide here matches. So let me just go through that real quick. In order to set up a checkout page, the first thing you do is you go to Settings, click the little arrow over here, and then choose Permalinks. And what you want is a custom structure that either looks like this, with a slash and then post name in between percent signs, or maybe category and then post name. Now the reason you want it to say category and post name is so that the URLs on your site have words in them rather than numbers. Now this is a good SEO tactic as well, so, so you don't lose anything by this. Click Save Changes after setting up your permalinks, and then you want to come and create a page. And you'll notice I've already created a page here. In fact, Authorize.net for WordPress will create the page for you by default. And on this page, you can put anything you'd like, but the important part is, see this little bit in yellow here? This is the permalink. And that means that somebody who comes to your website and wants to make it to the checkout page will go to this page. So you can change this if you wanted. Like, let's say you wanted to change that to Buy Now. Well, you can click Update here, and so now you've got Buy Now. But what you need to make sure you do is come back to your General Settings in Authorize.net and change this to Buy Now. So it doesn't really matter what you call your checkout page. The important part is you have to tell Authorize.net for WordPress where your thank you and your buy now pages are. And then remember always to update your settings when you're done. Now the other bit that you'll notice is important. Let's come back and look at our pages again. And look at our checkout page. And you'll notice there is what's called a short code. And a short code has a little square bracket and then some text and then a closing square bracket. Now AuthNet CO stands for AuthNet Checkout. And what this little code does is this will be replaced with the forms asking for an address, credit card details, and giving them a submit button. So if you had a site seal from VeriSign or GoDaddy or one of these sites that provides you with something that looks authentic and says that your site is secure, well all you have to do is come and put that in right here. If you had some special terms that you wanted to appear before the checkout form, terms or sales copy, well you could put that in here. And then always remember to update your page. And now what that means is that you have a chance to, in a sense, decorate your checkout form. You can put anything you'd like before or after it, and wherever you put this short code is where the checkout page will render. Now let's go back to our general settings. And you'll see that the same thing applies for the thank you page. As long as you tell it where the thank you page is, you can put whatever you'd like on the thank you page. And that would be a great place to put a message saying thank you for your purchase. It might also be a good place to put instructions about what to do next. 
Now, there are three optional fields here. You can ask for a username and password, and this will be useful if you're using Authorize.net for WordPress with a membership plugin, like MemberWing or Wishlist. You can also say ask for comments. And what this will do is it'll provide a text box where the person buying something can type in anything they want. So if you have a donation site, for example, or maybe even you just want special instructions from them or the ability for them to provide special instructions, by checking this box, you provide them with an area where they can type in some information, and that information will be stored with their transaction in your database. Now, the last thing is if you want to require a valid phone number, and you can check that here. Now, one of the reasons that's important is that the phone number, the address, all of these values, they're stored in your local database, but they're also transferred over to Authorize.net for WordPress. So if there's some reason that you require a phone number to follow up with people that have made a purchase, then be sure to check this box. So that's all there is to the checkout options. As you can see, they're very simple. Once you've built your checkout page and your thank you page, you're good to go. Thanks for watching.